So I'm brewing a cup of coffee and trimming beans for dinner tonight. Garden beans! I need a bowl. Not that bowl. That bowl will work. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, I can't do that accent. So, somebody on my Facebook feed posted a thing about how their beans got too woody in the garden, so they threw them away. If your beans get too woody in the garden, you open them up like peas, and you take the bean out, because the bean is still yummy, even if the shell is woody. Okay? And it goes into the compost, not the garbage. Really? So I posted on Facebook, I talk about you on YouTube. And Trinity said, I bet you don't. So I'm talking about Trinity on YouTube. <laughs> he's helped us move on multiple occasions. I think he's helped everybody move on multiple occasions. I think that's his hobby. Never mind that he has 27 other hobbies in life. You can tell when a bean is woody because it's airy. You go to pop it and there's air inside because it's dehydrated inside. Now if you have a pressure cooker you can still cook them. They'll still cook up nice and soft. That's what pressure cookers are for. But it's just as easy to pull the bean out. Can you see the bean? And cook the bean. You know? There's always this thing about Americans waste way too much food. And part of it is we don't understand that the entire food is edible. An example being pumpkin skin. Did you know that pumpkin skin is just as edible as pumpkin? So why do we skin the pumpkin? Because it tastes better skinned. That's all. Over here, you can't see it, hold on. I am steaming carnival pumpkins. They look like acorn squash, but they're not because they have a hard wood shell. Yeah, they have a hard wood shell. And I'm steaming them because I have the thought to make a little bit of pumpkin souffle. Brown sugar pumpkin souffle. Um, later, that's my second cup of coffee just went down. It's going to sit there for a minute. Anyway, half of what they label as food waste is us not eating parts of the food that... Okay, carrot tops. Carrot tops are edible. Do you eat your carrot tops? Most people don't. Most western people don't. Carrot tops make a halfway decent pesto. You know? But we throw them away, and it gets labeled food waste. And then we get told that our food waste is part of the problem with the environment and climate, and we're wasteful, and it's our fault. And... Check it out. Check it out. I don't know how many of these I planted, but one. This is from those mixed bean patches that I planted, just to put nitrogen into the soil. So, you know peel it open and there's a bean in there see because it's woody and you know it's woody when it gets furry inside okay anyway this will just be a mixed bean pot later tonight with some butter most of the beans are perfectly fine but this is that mixed bean gardens that I did to put nitrogen in the soil. There, so you go to pop and it doesn't pop, it's got air inside. Anyway, the consumer cannot directly impact the big environmental issues. Consumers as a whole can. We as a whole have absolutely immense power if we bond together and boycott things and make the decision that we're not buying single-use plastics. We don't need 
our peanut butter in a plastic jar will be just, or in a squeeze tube, we're just fine with a bottle. We as consumers can make an effect, but we as an individual, it's a waste of time. Does that mean that I don't think the consumer should? I... <sighs> My brain hurts, you know? Multitasking. Um, going back to money. There's only so much money you can make. Okay? I explained this to a former friend, somebody who defriended me on Facebook without telling me why, that I thought was a lifelong friend, blah, blah, blah. They worked the farmer's market. And they worked the farmer's market doing an art thing that took a specific amount of time. And they priced by piece. And I tried to explain that they needed to price by hour or by quarter hour, the way like tarot cards prices. And they pushed back that no, you know, people are used to paying by piece. And I was like, then you need to figure out how long it takes to do the piece and stick to that time frame. Because I keep watching people say, I'll take this piece. Oh, can you add a flower? Oh, can you add a button? Oh, can you add? And instead of being a 15 minute job, it becomes a one hour job. Well, you only got paid for the 15 minutes. And the thing is, the farmer's market is open from, we'll say, just random, 7 to 3. So, to customers. 7 to 3 is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. 8 hours. Good number. And you're doing something that you can only accomplish one per hour. That means you only have eight spots. And if you let somebody take an hour and 20, they just cut into your last hour. Now you're only gonna get seven hours. And you need to make cost to your materials and booth space and transportation and that cup of coffee and lunch. So you need to make 300 bucks. And you've got effectively seven hours to make 300 bucks. That means you need to charge, I cannot do math right now. One of the things with the dyslexia is I get dyscalculic and anytime I start trying to even think in math, I get a twingy, stuttery, headachey thing. Anyway, you need to charge 50 bucks an hour. That's your minimum, just to break even. And you're charging $25 an item. And to you, you're making a lot of money because here's 20 bucks and here's 20 bucks and here's 20 bucks and here's 20 bucks and here's 20 bucks. But at the end of the day, you have $415 in your pocket and you're like, woohoo, I made $415. It's like, no, you didn't. You spent $300 to be here. You made $115 on eight hours of work. That's it. $115 on eight hours of work is, let's just say what's $10 an hour is 80 bucks. So you made more than 10 bucks an hour. I mean, not looking down on it, you made some money. Oh, look at this, these little ones. These little ones have black beans. Now I have to go back through all the little ones that I thought were good and pull the beans out. That one looks to be good. One of the easiest ways is to break it in the middle. Because if you break it in the middle and there's no bean, you're good. Here, I'll pull one up and do it. So, there's no bean. That's why they're called snap beans. See, that one's got enough bean deformation that there might be beans in there, but no beans. That one, there's a bean. I did not think that that one was at the bean stage. That's a really soft bean. We're going to leave it. Anyway, when you're telling yourself, I made 10 bucks an hour, it's a good day, but it costs you 8 bucks an hour to be there. 
people don't understand that when you go to a, an hourly job, the job is paying those expenses. So when you're trying to figure out whether or not something is cost effective, say going to a convention, there are so many people I know who talk about a convention being a good day, and if you sit down and do the math, they did not make booth fee. They didn't make the cost of what they were selling, but they had fun. And that's a huge issue, and that's the last issue I'm going to address. I used to be under the opinion that this successful business person and that successful business person were making a living. And in America right now, a large number of small businesses are hobbies. No other way to put it. The spouse has a full-time job. The spouse's full-time job is paying the insurance. If they don't need to live off of the money made in that job, it's a hobby. It's a social event. It's a way to make friends. It's not a living. And those of us who are trying to make money cannot compete. Making jewelry, you cannot compete with the woman who's buying her supplies at Michael's Crafts, whipping together necklaces and going to craft and art shows and selling her necklaces below the cost of her product because she just wants to be out of the house. You can't compete with that. But the consumer will expect you to compete. Well, hers are only 20 bucks. Why is your 50? Hers are only 20 bucks. I think I'll go get them for wholesale. You know, you can't compete. There was a Hawaiian store in Tacoma that sold some really cool stuff that I bought over the years. Got into a conversation with her one day and she made the comment that she's just there to make margarita money for her vacations. That's all she's there for. It's a hobby. She owns the building, or her husband owns the building, so she doesn't have to pay rent. Ah, it squirted me. And she's just making pocket change. Well, that affects how you price things, you know? Anyway, making money in a bad economy if I was in Hawaii right now, I'd be going to Kona to make extra money. Because the retired folks in Kona have money in their pockets. Brother over in Hilo, he's out of work too. The only people making money in Hilo right now are people who have a government job. A construction job. Deb with the Home Depot job. Okay. This is where the money is. And everybody else is out of work. Half of them are on DSHS in some form, or whatever they call it these days. Financial assistance in some form. Some of them are on church assistance. But if I were in Hawaii right now, the swap meets and flea markets and whatnot on Kona side are going to have a lot more money and Waimea even, are going to have a lot more money than anything in Hilo. Then you got the expense of going over there, you know, for a weekend. It's like YouTube. In theory, you can make money on YouTube, okay? Start a YouTube channel, provide content, have fun with it, and people will subscribe, and eventually you'll get a thousand viewers, and once you have a thousand viewers, you can put ads on per video. You can put ads on, and then you can make pennies per video. And I saw a thing a while back that if you had 5,000 people viewing a video with one basic ad that they watched all the way through, you'd make about 100 bucks. That's cool. That's great. That's wonderful. I ain't got that many subscribers. Now, yes, I do know that if I put a backdrop behind and I stood like this and I did my videos in a professional manner and I had enthusiasm and I was just like, this is so cool and check out my beans and I'm going to give you a recipe for beans. And I did all of those mannerisms that the YouTube people do. I'd get more view viewers. I'd peg on the algorithms. 
and eventually I'd have viewers and eventually I'd have ads and eventually I'd make a few bucks and you got to put out two videos a week and you need editing equipment but you can in theory make some money on YouTube I know a couple of people who I am friends with who are making three to four hundred dollars a month on YouTube they're putting out two videos a week it's taking almost a full-time job's worth of time to put out those videos they don't care it's something to do and it's money that they wouldn't have otherwise I don't have the personality for it I'm doing these videos for myself half of the reason I'm doing these videos is the husband's autism is such that he really does not like eye contact and this is a way we can have a conversation sometimes on a subject that needs to be addressed half of the reason I'm doing this is because I think out loud and a lot of times I need to talk to somebody in order to figure out what I'm thinking so doing a video allows me to talk to somebody and figure out what I'm thinking you know even if that somebody is a YouTube video person you know um, eBay shipping from Hawaii is prohibitive shipping to Hawaii is prohibitive so I don't know about doing online you know I hate Etsy with a passion um, I had a really good Etsy store for years I was selling stuff and the big thing that happens with Etsy is the same thing that happens in conventions is the same thing that happens a lot of other places you come up with something new and you get a whole bunch of sales on it and then somebody comes along and imitates you and your sales go away when we were doing SCA still I came up with essential oils one year and I I have a wholesale account with an essential oil company and I brought essential oils and herbs and I had really good sales for one season and the very next season five different vendors had essential oils five two of them I thought were friends oh but mine are different yeah but you just took my market because there isn't enough sales to support five different vendors at all the same events there just isn't Etsy I would post something and within two weeks I would have copiers and it just drove me nuts okay I don't have the reserves it's kinda of like I came up with a business plan for conventions and I made the mistake of telling one person and that one person told one friend and the next time I went to a convention my idea would have started with four thousand dollars and they started with thirty thousand they had a complete booth dedicated to my idea it's like you know that really sucks because now if I do it it looks like I'm imitating A and B I can't compete with that I just can't can't compete with hobbies can't compete with trust funds can't compete with drinking funds just can't making money to live the reason they call it the side hustle at one point in Tacoma Michael had five different jobs most of those jobs were four hours here and four hours there but five different jobs he did that for two years okay it sucks it really sucks I've gone from working 120 hours a week to not working at all because of health problems more times than I can count and what it comes down to is I work myself to a cr crash managed Beanie Baby stands at the mall at Christmas time that was fun actually it was I'm not even halfway done with these beans it's been 20 minutes I'm gonna call it close at this point those were some thoughts I'll keep going you know tell me give me feedback tell me what you're thinking I have always found it easier to save money than to make money and I have always found barter more profitable than paycheck always you know what can I trade you for that some of these beans are really woody but when they're really woody you get the bean out because the bean is still edible and you still have food 
anyway. Keep safe. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.